Right, so we're diving into this Dodgers Padres NLDS game four today. He sent us a bunch of articles, and yeah, we're going to break down just how intense this rivalry's gotten. It really is. Uh, it's incredible how this rivalry has just gone like to a new level in recent years. I mean, for the longest time, you know, the Dodgers were the undisputed kings of the NL West, and the Padres, they were always seen as the team with potential, you know always trying to catch up yeah chasing the dragon right i remember that quote exactly chasing the dragon but recently i mean the padres they've started to breathe some fire of their own oh absolutely they've been taking Why down not? that dragon Please. even bounced the dodgers out of the playoffs yeah. back in 22 so coming into this series i mean the stakes were already through the roof and then the padres come out swinging they take a 2-0 series lead talk about pressure on the dodgers oh yeah especially with such a star-studded and let's be honest expensive roster you know an another early exit, that was not an option for them. In game four, wow. Talk about a turning point with their backs against the wall. The Dodgers went with a bullpen game using Ryan Brazier as their opener. Yeah, a bold strategy to say the least, uh, for those unfamiliar. A bullpen game, it basically means a team uses a revolving door of relievers instead of a traditional starting pitcher. It's not yeah. something you see often, especially in a crucial playoff game like this. Definitely keeps things unpredictable. And to make matters even more interesting, the Padres countered with Dylan Cease on short rest for the first time in his career. Yeah, so short rest means Cease was pitching again with less than the typical four days of rest between outings. It can be a gamble, you know, because it puts extra strain on a pitcher's arm. But the Padres were hoping he could replicate his dominant form. But pitching on short rest can be a real wild card. And the game itself, man, it was electric. Mookie Betts, what else is new, came up huge for the Dodgers. That home run of his was incredible. The kind of hit that can swing the momentum of an entire series. Right. Betts has been a thorn in the Padres' side all series, a constant threat at the plate. And when he gets going, the rest of the Dodgers' lineup seems to feed off his energy. You're telling me. And then there's Teoscar Hernandez, clutch hit after clutch hit. This guy was on fire the whole series, almost like he'd been saving his best for this matchup. Hernandez has been a revelation for the Dodgers this postseason. You could argue that he was the difference maker for them in this game coming up big time and time again. Absolutely. And we can't forget about Will Smith. He'd been having a tough time at the plate, but that home run, it was like a huge weight lifted off his shoulders. Oh. You could almost feel the Dodgers settle into a groove after that. Yeah, some, sometimes all it takes is one swing to break a slump and change the entire complexion of a game that was a massive moment for both Smith and the Dodgers. And then, of course, Gavin Lux breaking the game wide open with that two-run homer, 8 to nothing, and that's all she wrote. What a statement win, right? Talk about flipping the script against a Padres team that had been, you know, scoring runs at will. A complete game shutout is a huge statement. The Dodgers were firing on all cylinders, aggressive, base-running disciplined at bats. And despite the unconventional pitching approach, they executed flawlessly. And, you know, we'd be remiss not to mention the injuries, right? Because they kind of cast a shadow over this whole series. The Padres were already, without Joe Musgrove, a major blow to their pitching staff. Oh, absolutely. Musgrove's a true competitor, and his absence, you know, it forced the Padres' hand. It put even more pressure on their remaining starters. You could argue that the series might have gone a different direction if they'd had him on the mound. Yeah, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? And then to make matters worse for the Dodgers, they lose Freddie Freeman right before Game 4 to a sprained ankle. And Miguel Rojas aggravates his groin injury during the game. Yeah, losing Freeman, especially in a pivotal game like this, is a tough break for any team. He's the anchor of that Dodgers lineup, a consistent run producer. Hmm. You know, his absence forced both managers into some, like, last-minute lineup changes. It really highlights how quickly things can change in the postseason. You know, one minute you're riding high, the next minute you're scrambling to adjust. Exactly. Every decision, every at-bat, every pitch carries so much weight and... You know, those unexpected twists and turns make it all the more exciting. So now we're set for a do-or-die game five back at Dodger Stadium. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere is going to be absolutely electric. Well, energy in Dodger Stadium for a game five with this much history between these two teams, it's going to be off the charts. It's anyone's game. Talk about a pressure cooker. Mm. What are you most looking forward to in this final showdown? Well, for the Dodgers, it's all going to come down to their pitching. Can they recreate the magic they found in Game 4? And for the Padres, they need to rediscover their offensive rhythm. Can they bounce back from that shutout and put runs on the board? It'll be a chess match for sure. It all boils down to who can better handle the pressure and capitalize on those game-changing opportunities. Mm. This series has been a roller coaster reminding us that sometimes the underdog finds a way. It's those unpredictable moments that make baseball so captivating. 
Absolutely. And no matter who comes out on top, and one thing's for sure, this Dodgers-Padres rivalry, it just keeps getting more and more intense. We'll be talking about this series for years to come. You can count on it. Until next time, keep diving deep.